What is a magnetic battery? All right, so leading in from the previous video. Magnetic battery, different from electrochemical and electrostatic batteries. A magnetic battery would be one which uses alternating current and simply traps the magnetic wave, oscillating back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So this isn't new, yeah? this, this theory's been around for about 200 years, but the application of it isn't out there. So I'll explain a magnetic battery, and then I will present my theoretical invention <laughs> that you'd be able to actually utilize this form. So if we, and if you don't get this, go back and watch the previous video. <laughs> yeah. So if we've got this, this capacitor plate here, yeah, this funky capacitor, and in the previous example we had a generator, we had like a constant alternating current generator, maybe a single or three phase generator itself, or some form of alternating current like MOSFET switching. But what if we replace that with a coil? So this is an inductor, yeah? Now, at the moment, what we've got is an electrostatic field, which is just sitting dormant. So the charges are quite content. The, the relationship of energy between the two, neither one of these plates is in a higher or lower energy state yet. And this coil is, is we could call it unmagnetized. It's just at rest. The actual magnetic properties of the copper are not in motion at this time. So we can put this together and nothing will happen. <laughs> yeah? What we have to introduce to the system is some kind of charge or some kind of funky magnetic motion. So the easiest thing to do will be to attach some other form of external electricity, electrical force, to the two uh, uh, plates of this capacitor. Now, in order for this to be able to cause a bouncing reflected oscillation, so we can set up our own AC wave out of a DC input, we can transform DC into AC without actually using any switching or transistors or MOSFETs or, or mechanical motion of any kind. What, we, what that would need is for the time period that it takes for this capacitor to gain charge and then to give charge out, like this funky curve, this awesome bell curve, that time period is going to need to be identical to the time period that it takes for the inductor to take up this magnetic motion and expand its magnetic field potential, and then for the field to collapse and continue forcing magnetic waves and motion through the inductor uh, as a function of the collapsing magnetic potential. I, I don't want to say field, because it's not defined well, but I'll say field for now for this video. So, if you can imagine that we insert, insert we, we couple an external electric source to this battery. Let's call this a 36 volt external battery. Super simple, yeah? Now, we just tap this source onto the capacitor, or, or let's say we've calculated that, that the capacitor is going to require half a second to uptake the charge. You know? it's kind of, that's ridiculously massive, but let's just use that. So we hold this on for half a second, and then what will be happening is that as soon as we take away the connection of this battery, immediately, because there's effectively a closed circuit, because this is all one piece of copper, you know, the wire is attached, the capacitor will discharge because the components, the, the electrostatic forces, which are all resting here against the plates, they want to come back into equilibrium. So they can, they can, there can be a flow of magnetic waves. So they're going to flow, they're going to leave, and they're going to, what's the word? God, English sucks as a language, doesn't it? Fuck. So they're going to come back to balance, let's put it that way. What will happen is a wave of magnetism will ripple through the wire. Yeah? As it does, it will actually cause ah, it will cause what we tend to call a magnetic field to be expanded, to be to become evident in language with this inductor, this coil. Yeah? Now let's say that this continues uh, so that by the time that the electric wave, that this mag the magnetic wave, has propagated almost back around 
to this point so that the capacitor's almost back to at equilibrium, being at rest, the magnetic field, or the field potential on the inductor, it has not yet fully depleted. It's still expanding. So it starts to collapse because there's no longer a propagation of magnetic flow. So the field starts to collapse. What happens is because any time you have moving magnetic uh, influence, how's that for another word, then you're going to create magnetic waves and we'll be able to tap electricity out of them as the zero degree angle to the magnetic wave itself. So the collapsing field further pushes extra magnetic wave, magnetic current, in this direction. So it, it reverses the polarity. So this becomes overcharged in the opposite direction. Yeah. So it's like it, it was charged up here and then it kind of went to rest and it was happy there and it accidentally got pushed to the opposite side. Like the kid on the swing, you know. So then it wants to do the reverse. So now this is going to start propagating backwards, backwards, backwards. This field expands again. It's just motion in a different direction. The same thing occurs. This starts to arrive at a point of equilibrium, but the field collapsing pushes in the same direction as the flow was originally, a little bit extra, just, a, just like a little tiny chunk extra. So that will again overcharge the capacitor. And this magnetic wave will bounce back and forward and back and forward and back and forward. Theoretically, infinitely, except for the entropy to the rest of the system, you know, to heating or to friction or motion loss, etc., etc. But this is, in theory, this is the world's first alternating current battery. Yeah, it's not electrochemical. It's entirely magnetic wave based, but it's a bit of a closed system. It's hard to get into it. As soon as you were to try to tap off any of the electrical motion or charge you would decrease and degrade the amplitude of the wave and you would just... So the battery would have no usable power, yeah? What if? What if we took that idea and we just expanded it out? We, we make like a mirror image of this kind of concept. So we've got our capacitor. And then we have our central inductor. Yeah? So this is one component. Let's get another piece of chalk. Let's put... Let's wrap these two inductors together here in this way. Now, whatever is occurring here magnetically is going to induce, means like cause, the same direction and the same amplitude of magnetic motion in this coil, in this, this conductor, in this circuit. So I could have a system of magnetic motion oscillating back and forward and back and forward here, and I could be causing an identical replica, like a like a, a clone of that, over here in this circuit, this circuit system. I could have a third one, you know, coming off at like a, a star angle. Now I, in theory, I could find voltage here at these two points. I could watch a voltage potential at these sections without degrading the actual amplitude of this wave by simply tapping this section off, yeah? To a degree, because the induction itself is going to slow the wave, it's going to cause a greater amount of drag against the wave itself, and it will alter, given that there's now two inductors with a, um, a, the strength of their magnetic field potential, it's going to alter the time period that the circuit is oscillating in. So if I could overcome that, if I could set this up in a specific way where now given the value of the two inductors relative to the capacitor input, I could calculate the new value for the capacitor, then I could keep this wave oscillating back and forward and I might be able to show that I can have alternating current over here. And all I have to do to charge this up was to just tap it with a battery for a tenth of a second. And I can walk around with an alternating current battery. It's hard to write on the side. Rudimentary, but it gets you into the idea of how magnetic wave oscillation could work. 